from the depths instant tutorial it's Jim Edism and you are watching instant tutorials we're back and today we're going to talk about the planar shield projector and to begin with the planar shield projector is a little surface shield that magically appears in the air and you pay tremendous amounts of engine power to keep them there and they have a chance to deflect enemy projectiles which is very nice indeed. They also help with reducing armor piercing values of incoming lasers and other stuff. So that is pretty useful. And to begin there are extremely few instances where you would not want to use these shields. These shields are really really good. And, and just to display here you can see if we shoot that went through. If we shoot again went through went through that bounced off and you see one of the shots sometimes they just bounce off they have a chance to bounce very nice uh, these shields have a higher chance of bouncing an incoming shell if the angle is sharper so if I set it like that it will deflect even more shots and if we set it almost kind of flat towards the weapon it will bounce a considerably lower amount of shots. Right, so before we talk about the good things with shields, let's talk about its drawbacks. And one drawback, as already mentioned, they require a lot of power. If you cover your entire ship with shields, they require some power. This shield only takes, um, well, you know, 39 power, so basically nothing. But if we would increase this thing and make it further away and stuff, then it's suddenly like 4,000, which is um, a lot more, if you didn't know. Another drawback is that they generate heat. You can see it's hot. The larger and stronger and further away it is, the hotter it becomes. The more engine power it uses, the hotter it becomes. And uh, if you're a smart person, you set up your weapons, some of your weapons, to target hot blocks because then they will usually fire where people have their shields. Where people have their shields, they have valuable things. So I really recommend you to use some heat decoys and make them pretty strong uh, so that they are hotter than any shield or make the strongest shield be in front of something that's not that important. Kind of funny, but that's how it works. Right, so um, what do we have more? Another drawback is we can't use it together with ring shields. You have to use either. Uh, and we'll talk about ring shields more in another video. If you want to generate a lot of engine power, please check my Steam Engine Instant Tutorial or uh, my Fuel Engine Instant Tutorial. So uh, if we go into the shield, we can spawn them any direction like this and a shield appears in the air in front of it. We need to make it a uh, good size to cover and it's of course only the area that you see that will actually block something incoming. So you want to cover either your entire ship or important parts of your ship. They work underwater and will extend down into underwater as well so that's fine. Then we have different angles here and the angles the shots are incoming at will make it so that it's uh, well a higher chance to bounce. Then we have something called effect strength. The stronger the shield is, the higher the percentage or likability that something will bounce from it. So uh, we also have range from the shield projector. And the range from the shield projector, now let's see here, uh, I accidentally removed that one. Uh, the range from it will make it so that it uses a tremendously more amount of power. You can see it now uses 58, but if we have it really close, it only uses 4. So it's basically tenfold. However, this is something that a lot of people don't know, but when we have them a long way from where they are projected, they are actually generated faster. So you, you see here, uh, max strength generation. Look at that. I bring it close, 0 0.08, and that's very slow and 0.32. So the shield projectors are replenishing faster when they are further away. 
The further away they are from source, the faster they generate. Really weird, but that's how it works. Um, probably something to do with the lens inside of here, who knows. Um, but if you can pay the power, it can be a good idea to have them deep in the ship, because then it also means that they are hard to destroy. Now, uh, the projector shield, if this block is destroyed, it only costs 100, so it's not super expensive. But if this gets uh, destroyed, the shield is gone. So you want to have this inside the hull of your ship or inside turrets. It's very smart to put planar shield projectors on top of, uh, like in front of important turrets so that you can protect the base of the barrels and of course the firing pieces. Um, and of course put this in front of anything important in general because they will deflect a lot of shots. And when we look here we see projectile reflect minimum chance. This is now at 40. Uh, the angle doesn't change it, it changes it in reality, but we don't see the change here. Uh, this is like in general. Um, and projectile, re <laughs> projectile reflect max chance. So somewhere between 20 and 40 uh, percent, point blank, it will stop it. Uh, or it will, uh, that's kind of there. It does some uh, random math and you'll luck you're, you're either lucky or you're not. Um, but that is pretty darn useful. So if we have it weaker, if we have it like super weak, it basically doesn't draw any power, but it's only between 3.5 and like 7. Um, yeah, so it's a, it has a really low chance of deflecting anything. So in general, I would keep this as high as possible, at least in from 7 and up because otherwise what's what's the point of even having a shield if you're not able to you know um, so just improve your engine make a stronger engine so that you can have strong shields because you don't want to have like weak shields then you might as well not have them have them at the maximum strength you can afford so um, other than that shield block this important protect it um, Stick this inside your main hull and you might also want to surround it with some heavy armor because as long as this is alive a lot of shells won't even get through and that is more valuable than you might uh, imagine. We can protect against lasers using uh, shields. So for example here we activate this little laser and you can see it burns through. Uh, but if we activate this shield here and try again, then it will take considerably longer time for it to go through. And you can see that the strength of the shield went down when we were lasing it. So uh, instead of this block taking the damage, damage was reverted to the shield. So the shield is weakened when it takes uh, well, when it gets hit and stuff going through it. So stuff going through shields makes the shields weaker. That's why some people have uh, low cali caliber uh, weapons also spamming together with their big slow main guns because then the shields are usually kept at a, well, not so strong. So there are some other things in the shield settings here. We can go into this uh, block here. And we have colors, and colors is of course very important. And you might say, I don't want to use shields because I don't think they look good. Well, whatever you do, just use shields, but you can do like this. Look, we can have a scary black shield. And then we draw the alpha down to zero, and we apply to all, and the shields are invisible. Isn't that kind of amazing? See? We can see the shield, but it's still there. So. Uh, yes, if you don't want to use shields because you think that is uh, unrealistic and you are building World War One things only, sure, don't use shields, but don't use the excuse, shields are ugly, so I won't use them, because that's not true. Um, I like to have my red shields, and you can set up your color here and then apply color to all, and that will just change the color of all shields, so now this one is also a nice red. Right, so shields, uh, they're kind of expensive, right, uh, to run in power, and we don't want to have them running uh, all the time. So, how do we do this? Is there a solution? Yes, there is. What I usually do is you just go to, or you should do if you don't, go to ASPs, 
spawn two of them here. Um, condition. And then you'll just uh, scroll down, enemy, air range. And set this to like max and this to like min. So just check the range. Zero to five thousand meters, like a lot. If there is an enemy basically existing. Then we go to the uh, defenses. And we're gonna set uh, shields. So we need to find them here. In front of me, shield projectors. Check that one. And then we set... Uh, Set drive. Set drive below one disables. Right. So if there is an enemy within, well, then we should set it to be 10. So this will set all shields to maximum. If you can't afford a power, set it to 8 or whatever the highest number uh, you can have. And then you'll just copy this, control C, paste it over this, control V. And then you run down here, set inverted, and then you go here and set this to uh, zero. Now, you can see the shields are off, but if we spawn a little enemy that it exists, it will activate all shields. And if we destroy enemy vehicles, the shields are gone again. So hide this inside your AI core so they're nice and hidden. And now you will have shields that only eat power when there is an enemy detected. Very handy. You can also set them up more carefully if you want to. Uh, but in general, that is how we do it. So, I think this is all you have to know about shields. And well, you should definitely start using them. Shields, very handy. And now you know how to. Thanks a lot for watching and keep tuned for future instant tutorials. Check out the instant tutorial playlist. You probably haven't seen them all and there is a lot to learn. So this is your host, Jim and we're signing out.